and we'll get to the artwork in just a second. All right. Okay, so my name is Miss Gabby and I work at Strathmore. I am the exhibitions coordinator and what that means is that I help put on our exhibitions. And typically we have you um, at Strathmore, but we all know that we're staying home to stay safe and keep others safe. So I'm happy that we could do the next best thing, which is um, to meet uh, over video chat. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, and we'll um, be talking about quilts today. So you may have heard me just say I'm the exhibitions coordinator. Um, if you have heard the word exhibition, think about where you've heard it before. Where have you heard the term exhibition? Maybe at a museum, maybe at a gallery. Um, we certainly put on exhibitions all the time, so you may have heard it at Strathmore. But part of the word exhibition is exhibit. And to exhibit means to show. So we're going to be showing you artwork. So we're going to be showing you specifically quilt artwork today. And the title of our exhibition is called Working with the Muse. So if you've got a friend or a parent or family member nearby, just think out loud, what, where have you heard the term muse before? What do you think muse means? Think about that. Think about where have you heard it? What could it possibly mean? Well, it means inspiration. It means what inspires you. So when the artists are working with the muse, they're working with things that inspire them. And we're going to learn a little bit about that for each piece on display here. So before we do jump into the quilts um, that are on display, um, and um, all of their inspirations. Um, let's talk about what a quilt is. So you may have seen a quilt before. Maybe you've seen a bedspread um, or a quilt on a couch, or maybe a family member has made um, a quilt for you, like a baby blanket. Um, and so let's take a look at what is um, maybe what you've seen before. So I'm going to share my screen with you here so you all can take a look. So here we have, oh, let me just make sure I can admit the next person. Great. Okay. So um, here we have an example of a quilt that you may have seen, um, uh, something like it. You may have seen something that looks like this in different colors, different patterns. Um, different um, fabrics around. And so this is what we might typically think of as a quilt. It's very traditional, it's a traditional quilt. So we're looking at what we know as quilts today. Um, so in this case, this quilt is made using a pattern. And a pattern is um, what you see in each different square here. It's a design that's already been decided or determined. So typically patterns are traditional. They run through families. People are using the same patterns over and over again um, and they have different names. So your activity today is actually using the starburst um, uh, quilt pattern. That's what it's called. That's what that design is called. But in the case of um, the quilts that we're going to be looking at today, all the quilts that we'll see today will be um, art quilts. And the difference between the quilt that we just saw, which is more typical of what you might see, and an art quilt is that those quilts use those patterns, designs, um, and the person who makes it has the freedom to choose whatever colors they want, whatever pattern um, fabrics they want. Um, but in an art quilt, the options are anything you can think of. So we're going to see some examples of that, which is really exciting. An art quilt is something that doesn't follow a pattern. The artist is freely coming up with whatever is best to express their ideas, and in this case, express their inspirations. And I do have also some examples of what makes up a quilt. Um, so when we talk about how quilts are made, um, there is um, a, one uh, term that encapsulates what makes up a quilt. So what makes a quilt is called the quilt sandwich. And I love that term. It kind of makes me a little bit hungry, but it's a fun term to explain all of the pieces of a quilt. 
So there are three pieces in the sandwich. Just like in a sandwich, you definitely need the bread on top, the bread on the bottom, and something in between. So if we think about our top bun, our top piece of bread, that is the fabric that you see when you look at it. So what we just saw on the quilt, all those patterns and designs, that's called the quilt top. And um, it's made out of fiber, different pieces of fiber sewn together. So this is one piece of fiber. And I could definitely just use one piece of fiber in my quilt if I wanted to, if I didn't want a design on top that I create myself. Um, but we have the quilt top. Next, we have the, the middle, which is called the batting. And batting is a term for the fluffy insides. If you've ever accidentally ripped open um, a stuffed animal or um, you know, you've seen kind of what's inside there, it's really fluffy. It gives it poof, it gives it structure. So here we have an example of, of, of batting, which is made out of wool. And so wool comes from sheep. You may have seen um, it's, you know, videos or pictures or in real life, you've seen how sheep get shaven and, and their fur gets used to make fabric. So this is wool. It's very fluffy and thick. So if you think about if you've ever used a quilt as a blanket, this is what gives it the warmth, the insides, the extra stuff that gives it a lot of weight. Um, it can also be made out of cotton. So here's an example of cotton batting. See, it's very thick. And the last part of the sandwich is the backing. And so the backing is just the back of the quilt. Um, some, most artists will use a, a fun pattern. Sometimes it's something left over that they're not going to use anymore because you won't really see the back of the quilt. Um, but here you can see how the batting has been attached to the backing just with, with something that's a little sticky. It's called spray adhesive. You spray it on, it's a little sticky and it holds it together. So if I take that and I take my quilt top, now what I have is a quilt sandwich. So you can see here I've got all three layers. I've got the quilt top, which you would see, and I've got the middle, which is the batting, and I've got the backing. And that is held together through stitching. Stitching is another word for sewing. So stitching is what holds everything together because you're taking thread and running it through the three different pieces of fabric. So stitching is typically done with thread, which you see here. So this is on something called a spool. It's very thin, right? And I'm gonna show you just how sewing kind of works um, with another technique called embroidery. So this is an embroidery hoop. It's a different type of art. And embroidery thread is a little thicker than the thread I just showed you, but it's thicker so that I can, so you can see it on the camera. So I have a needle attached to my thread here, and the needle is pretty sharp, and it's just sharp enough that if I push on my fabric, it'll come through on the other side. And then I pull the thread. You can see I've already done some stitching here. You can see I've made a flower, um, a little branch. So there's different styles of stitching you can do. Um, and that, what I just did there, is called hand stitching. But most of the artists we're gonna see today use machine stitching. And machi machine stitching is um, using a sewing machine. So lots of these artists are using sewing machines to make the work that you're gonna see today. So let's go ahead and get started at looking at our artwork. All right. So coming back to the example we just saw, we're gonna start with um, the first room in our exhibition. If you were at Strathmore, you would see um, this in the first room. Um, and these two pieces are called Bodhi Leaf um, by Alice Magorian and Patience Perseverance Play by Barbara Dahlberg. So um, in uh, Alice Magorian's piece, Bodhi Leaf, if we zoom in here, we can see her inspiration is nature. So um, she's very inspired by nature. And in this case, leaves, more specifically leaves. She's actually taken 
real leaves and sewn them into her work. But they look a little different than what you would see on, on a tree because they've, they've been off the tree for some time and they've disintegrated a little bit. They've, they've um, uh, lost their color. Um, and so now it's just all white. So they're very delicate, but she's sewn them in. And you can see lots of natural colors in the, the different fibers that she's chosen to sew together for her quilt. In persevere, uh, Patience, Perseverance, and Play on the right here, if we zoom in, we can see that Miss Dahlberg has taken inspiration from squirrels. And these squirrels made a home in her backyard out of a bird, a birdhouse. And she expected that the birdhouse would be for the birds, but the squirrels took over and she was inspired by, by their perseverance in trying to um, set up their home and how the mama squirrel took care of um, all of her baby. Just a second. Correct. Right. Okay, sorry, I just want to make sure everyone was muted here. This is all the chocolate. Oh, I'm sorry, let me make sure. If you are uh, at home, just make sure you are still on mute so that everyone. Uh, okay. okay, so everybody, please just make sure that you remain on mute so that everybody can hear. So um, in Patience Perseverance Play, we have these two squirrels also playing in the corner. And she's actually used her stitching. If we zoom in closer, we can see that her stitching is used to define the squirrel. So we see the outline created by her stitching to create the design of her squirrel. All right, we see someone says the squirrels are a big hit over here. I love that. <laughs> All right, so to our next piece, this is quite colorful. This one is called Offspring by Julia Gaff. And so in Offspring, we have examples of um, little tiny pieces of, of fiber that are sewn together to create the flower. So you can see as I zoom in that these are all different scraps of fabric in very bright colors, organized by color to create these wonderful um, flowers. And you may also see that there is a border on the work and the border is called the binding. So if you're going to be um, pursuing an activity later and you're older, if you're 10 and up, um, this will be one of your, your matching words on your activity. So the binding is the border of your, of your um, quilt. It's taking another piece of fabric and wrapping it around the sides so that we don't see the inside of the quilt sandwich. We just see this lovely um, uh, pattern that complements the work that, um, that you've done on your quilt top. All right. So we have two others here, Kissed by Spring by Kay Campbell on the left and Pray War Warriors by Katherine Wilson on the right. And I'm going to talk about Prayer Warriors because it's very similar to something we call a story quilt. Story quilts are a type of quilt that is used to tell a story. So one famous artist, and I'll type her name in the chat if you would like to look her up later, is Faith Ringgold. Faith Ringgold is actually in um, the local National Museum of Women Arts collection. Um, and um, she uh, is a famous artist for creating story quilts. And so take a look on their website and take a look at her work if you're interested in learning more. But story quilts show, show a picture. They show a something that tells a story. And that's been a tradition in quilt making for a long time. In this case, Catherine Wilson was thinking about what inspired her. What, who was her muse? Um, and her muse were all of the, um, um, all of the, sorry, just to make sure, looks like I didn't type, send over the name in the chat. Um, so, in, in Catherine Wilson's inspiration, her muse were the woman who went to her church. She was really inspired by their pr the prayer. Um, so the power of prayer for those women and how dedicated they were to, um, uh, to praying for others. And, and so that was her muse. So we see in the back, um, if we look at the full piece, we see at the top left corner we have, everybody say it out loud. 
you know what it is? A church. Yes, we see stained glass windows with patterned fabric. And we see the background as a sky. And we have the grass as well as um, the woman at the bottom um, of the piece ready to walk up to church. So we have a few others inspired by nature as well. Kissed by Spring by Kay Campbell. We have images of grass. And we're gonna not talk about every, every piece here, but I want to make sure that you can, you can still see it. You can follow along um, late, or you can look at it later by following the link and explore them um, in more detail. But I wanted to get to this piece here. On the left, we have Magnolia Grandiflora 4 by Andrea Finch. And on the right, we have The Light Within by Donald Radner. But I'm gonna be talking about Magnolia Grandifloria. And that is the scientific name for the flower that inspires the artist, um, typically just known as a magnolia. You can see this absolutely does not look like a quilt that you may see on your bedspread um, because it's three dimensional, it's 3D, it comes off the wall. So we see um, the petals coming out, we see the insides of the flower, and the artist has taken um, the freedom, the, just by using the magnolia as her inspiration, to show the flower, not as the flower looks in real life exactly, but what she sees in the flower, this burst of color, this burst of joy and burst of energy. Um, and so you can see all of these different um, uh, uh, elements of color she has swirled around and she stitched those together and then stuffed it with that batting that we talked about earlier. Remember we, we talked about how stuffed animals are filled with that fluffy stuff so she's stuffed these little pieces there to make sure that they stay three-dimensional. Sophia says that she likes the flower. I like the flower too. Thanks Sophia for, for chiming in. So here's another close-up of, of the flower here. And I also wanted to show the bottom of the piece because this is the inspiration for the bud of the flower, the part of the flower that hasn't become a flower yet. It's going to become a flower, um, but it's just not ready yet. And so she's used different darker colors to show what that looks like to her when it's on the tree. So here's another image of them together. So we have lots of bright colors used throughout the exhibition. Somebody asked, is this all machine stitched? Um, for the most part, all of the artists are using a machine to stitch their artwork. There are some examples of using hand stitching or rather using your hand to sew through the artwork. Um, and I'll point those out when we uh, point that out when we get to it, but for the most part, they are machine stitched. So by, and what I mean by that is using a sewing machine. So we have lots of bright colors and we have, um, for the most, but this is um, an example of a three-dimensional object, but while I'm talking about the colors that you see here, lots of artists are dyeing that themselves. So if you've ever done tie-dye before at home, um, you might have some experience with the dye. So that's color that you're using to make the fabric the color you want. So these are different examples of dyeing in, in quilt making. So you can make that any sort of color that you want. So as I mentioned, we're gonna just kind of pass through these here so we can get to um, all of the works. Our next one is going to be on the right here, which is called the Red Spot. So this is in our main hall, which is our second room in the exhibition. And this piece here called the Red Spot by Elizabeth Davison is a really good example of another way that you can make your own fabric. So we've seen, examples of bright colors achieved by using dye, just like tie-dye. But in this case, Elizabeth Davison has painted 
directly on her quilt. Oh, and Danny says, these quilts are so cool. I think they're really cool too. So we're gonna see so much more. You just wait, they're gonna get even cooler as we go. Um, and in The Red Spot by Elizabeth Davison, it's an example of how a quilt maker can also be a painter because Elizabeth has painted directly on her quilt using a specific type of dye, which is like a paint um, that will go, go deep into the fabric and stay there while she's working on it. So I like to think that these look a little bit like plants and this red spot maybe in the corner, what do you think that that might be? Maybe it might be a sun? Or if you've ever seen a red eclipse, it could look like the eclipse of a moon, sometimes when the sun comes behind the moon, or if the sun comes behind the earth and we look at the moon, the moon can look a little bit differently and sometimes it looks red. So that could be perhaps a little bit of her inspiration. But I wanted to talk about the red lines you see surrounding her paint marks. And that's another example of stitching. So we talked about how stitching is taking your thread through all of the pieces of fabric that you have. And in this case, it's hand stitching. So someone earlier asked if all of the quilts are, are made with sewing machines and they're stitched with sewing machines. And most of them are, but some little details like these are done by hand. So the artist would take their needle and thread and thread through, stitch through the fabric over and over using red thread. And this one here is called a running stitch because it seems to just run across the quilt. You can imagine that this red thread is taking leaps or jumps as they run across the quilt. And another style that this is called is called echo quilting. So if you've ever been in a cave and shouted hello, you may have heard back to you, hello, hello, hello. That's an echo. So this echo stitch is echoing the shape made by the leaf or the design. So it's echoing that by just show by uh, stitching just outside of it, just on the border of that. And we'll see another example of that as well. And here's the running stitch at the bottom again. So we have now an example of another term that will be on your activity if you're 10 and up, and that's a faced edge. So we saw example, an example of a board or a quilt, which is called the binding. Now a faced edge is when a quilt does not have a border. The artist takes the design all the way to the edges of the quilt. So here we don't see any border, we just see more of the design. And in this case, on Marking Change on McBride's Hill by Linda Strobridge, we have examples of stitching together different pieces of fabric that are all the same color. So there are different patterns, but she's organized them by color. And that's a really great way to think about making your quilt design. Now, you may have noticed I used the term piece. And when we talk about piece or piecing, that means putting together all of your different pieces of quilt. So that's what piecing is called. Here's another example of a face edge. So we have quite a few different quilts on display. So we're gonna run through these just a little bit. And if you like any of them specifically, you can follow the link that I added in the chat and look more closely at them. This one here is called Starlight Star Bright. And this is taking together many different patterns of, of fabric to create a star. And it's yet another example of echo stitching or hand stitching as well, because this is done with her hand. I also really love this piece and I think you'll like it too because I, I love elephants. They're one of my favorite animals. So if you love elephants too, go ahead and say so in the chat. 
um, or give us a wave or a thumbs up because I think elephants are an amazing inspiration for making a quilt. So in this case, the elephant is the artist's muse or their inspiration. And this is a really cool example of the quilt because not, oh, I see a thumbs up. We've got some people who also love elephants. And it looks like Ren might have a question. Ren, do you have a question? Made up. Yeah, sorry, can you say that again? Be loud. What is yarn made of? What is yarn made of? Oh, that's yeah. a really good question. Thank you. Um, so yarn um, or thread is made of different types of fabric. So really thin pieces of fabric. So sometimes it's wool. Um, sometimes, um, and wool comes from sheep. Um, sometimes um, uh, it's made from cotton, which is a plant. So cotton can be harvested from different plants and it's very, it has little strings inside of it that can be used to make yarn or thread. Um, and um, what, let's see, some other examples might be um, acrylic. So acrylic is another kind of, of uh, fabric. Um, and silk, and silk is made, if you can believe it, from worms. Worms create silk, um, which is, a, a, you know, it's not so gross if you wear it all the time and don't think about it, but little worms create string together silk, almost like if you've seen a spider create a web. Silkworms do that with silk. And so sometimes people will harvest the silk to create the yarn. So thank you for that question. That was um, a great question. Um, and if anybody else has a question, remember you can raise your hand as well and I'll call on you. All right. Thank you. Wait. Of course. All right, so here we go through um, talking about Dawn Begins. We have some plants made here um, by using um, a paint stick. So we have talked about how another artist has painted their fabric, mostly using a brush. But in this case, we have something that's a little bit more like a crayon that's been used to draw on these different plants. So we see some dye in the back, which are, is more like a, if you We've mentioned if you've done tie dye before, but in this case we have some drawn on um, leaves and here we have a stitched tree. And I really like her work because she's used the stitching to create all the wrinkles in elephants. And I, I think that's one of the aspects of elephants that I really love is I really love all of the folds and wrinkles in their skin. They look like such interesting creatures. Like they always say elephants are wise. And I think that might be because they've got a lot of wrinkles. <laughs> all right. So moving right along, we have just another example of Linda's work. But I'd really like to show you all this piece coming up by Lana Dragon. So here's an image of our small gallery. Um, and Lana Dragon has done this piece here called Pathways. Um, so we have a detail of Pathways here and we'll go through the details so we can also take a look at the bigger picture of hers. So here on the left, so if you can um, identify what's in, what's in the quilt, say to your parent or your friend, or just say it aloud, or maybe in the chat, what do you see here? Let's list the things that we see. We can also get closer here. I see a sky. I see... I see pebbles. You see what? Pebbles. Pebbles, thank you, very good. We see pebbles. You may see a boat. Anybody else? Mountains. I mountains in the background. Very good. Mountains. Now, what's the main subject here? What takes up the most of this quilt? Water. 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 Very good. And what's in the water? What do we see that's orange in the center? Geese. No, it's orange. Boat. Boat. A boat. Good. We see the geese in the background. Thank you for mentioning that too. I don't think anybody said that yet. And we see the boat in the foreground as well. So the boat is our main subject. Um, and so she's used so many different details to create these different images for you in the scene. We have, oops, let's, let's go back. 
First off, we have the pebbles that you saw. And those pebbles are in a fabric that she created by taking a photograph and printing the photograph on her fabric. So we have the pebbles on the shore. And then she's used here this, this netting fabric, which has made it look like the see-through waves coming up onto the shore. Next, we see another example of how she's taken a photograph and printed it on the fabric in these blue tones. That's actually a, a photograph of water that she's printed on the fabric. And now she's actually stitched, you can see the little details that she's stitched through the different waves and ripples. And as we look on the boardwalk too, or the dock where the boat is, we can see another example of of the water stitching, how it's very curvy um, and mimics those ripples. But then we also see how she's created on the wood some curves that are more like the curves in a wood, right, in the wood grain. So it's a little straighter, but it's still very organic. And when we say organic, we mean very much like nature, so like wood. So we have some another example of drawing on your quilt adding some beads as well. This piece is called Elegance by Estelle Porter. We also have some more nature inspired quilts, but I'd really like to talk to talk about our next one, um, which is At Water's Edge by Karen Amelia Brown. It is on the left of, of the image here. And again, if you're doing um, the 10 and up activity, um, we have um, uh, different key terms for you to learn there. So another one of those key terms here is applique. And applique is when you take a piece of fabric and sew it on top of another one. In this case, we have lots of little dots here that have been sewn on top of her fabric. And I think they look a little bit like bubbles. And then you see on the right that she's got little, um, she's got circles again, but in a lighter, more um, brown color scheme to look like the sand. So that's an example of applique, of taking pieces of fabric and sewing them on top. So we have a few other examples of fun stitching in spirals here like branches of, lee, of trees. But I'd really like to talk about our next one coming up, which is um, by Kay Campbell. So here we have one by Domini Nash. And let's keep going to get to Kay Campbell on the left and on the right. So we talked about earlier the difference between the quilts that you may see in your home or that you might use on your bed or that may be um, gifted to you by a family member as a baby blanket. And so the difference between those and art quilts. And art quilts are quilts that don't follow a pattern. They don't follow a design that is um, more traditional or replicated or and what I mean by that is repeated over and over again. Um, instead, the artist is free to do whatever they want. They can, they can sew together um, any design they like um, and anything that inspires them. So we're looking at some inspirations here. And another difference between an art quilt and a quilt that you may use is that an art quilt hangs on a wall. And in this case, it would be hard to imagine this one on the left called Simple Joys by Kay Campbell. Um, it would be hard to imagine that, um, that you wouldn't, um, that you would be able to use it because it has tiles in it, ceramic pieces, and ceramic is like clay. So sometimes you might have a ceramic plate or a ceramic dish. Um, these are very hard pieces here that are sewn in as decoration. So that might be a little uncomfortable if you used it as a blanket, but here she's using it in an artistic way. She's showing different simple joys, the, a little beetle, a leaf, um, and in this case, a little bug here. She takes inspiration from these little tiny animals and pieces of nature and plants that she finds inspiration from, and she's sewn it into the design of her quilt. The next piece on the right, the intrigue of interaction, is very different and interesting. It's inspired by architecture. 
Architecture is the name for how buildings are built, how homes are built, and what they look like, the differences in how they look. And this artist, Linda Syverson Guild, was very interested in how her neighbor's house looked. Her neighbor had lots of windows and lots of spaces that were cut out of walls inside so you could see beyond one wall to another one and then to the windows in the back of the home. So she took that design as inspiration and she used cutouts to create different layers of the quilts. So this quilt is also a little three dimensional. So she has these cutouts, different pieces on top of each other. They kind of float up, up off of the quilt. And she's used her stitching, which is the thread, to create different colors for each wall. So we have a red on the outside wall, a blue on the next wall, and you can see the yellow stitching in the wall beyond that, and then some orange in the windows behind. So she's thinking a lot about color. Now I wanted to show you this piece here, Waterworks by Linda Kolsch, and talk a little bit about the label. So you see on the left this little white sign, that is an art label that we use in our exhibitions. And it tells you who made the artwork, who, it's, or who made the artwork, what it's called, when it was made, what it's made out of, and how much it cost. Because lots of these quilts are for sale. So people can buy these quilts and take it home and hang it on their walls too. But a quilt label, and again, this is a term for those doing the tenant of activity, a quilt label is a label that's sewn into the back of the quilt itself. So it's a piece of fabric that also says who the artwork is by, and that's sewn in on the back. And so for Linda Kolsch, in this piece, the title is Waterworks. We can maybe think about her inspiration for a second if the title is Waterworks. Her inspiration is water. She's inspired by the creeks and bays, and, or the Chesapeake Bay, but the creeks and rivers in her backyard. She lives near the Chesapeake Bay. If you've ever been there before, it's a very inspiring place. She's interested in how water moves. So she's used paint to paint maybe how she imagines water moving in this, in this work. And in her second piece called Ew. Water... What did I just do? Sorry? I want to ask um, um, if, if she's inspired by water, why is it like all black and white? That's a really good question. I think she's very um, interested in some of the gray tones of stones that are in creeks. Um, so you see some browns, you see some grays. Um, and I think she's inspired by the rocks and the water because when she's looking at a creek or she's looking at um, a river, the water doesn't, doesn't look blue because the water is clear. And so underneath the clear water, she sees the gray and brown rocks. Um, now the Chesapeake Bay definitely appears a little more blue or a little more green. Um, but in this case, I think she's mostly looking at the creeks and rivers as, um, as her inspiration for color. And in this piece here, it kind of relates to that. This one is called water writing. And in water writing, she is taking inspiration of how the water carves into rocks over time. So if you ever see a rock coming out of a river and you see the water going around the sides of the rock, you can imagine that over time, the water being so forceful is going to shape the rock and give it a shape. So it's going to carve into that rock over time. Not, not in just a day or two, it takes many, many years, but over time it carves into the rock. And that's something called erosion. And she's very interested in how water carves into the rock in the same way that she might write on a piece of paper. So she imagines that the water is writing on the rock, just like she might be writing on a piece of paper. Or in this case, she's almost writing on her fabric. She's painting, so it's different than writing, but she's still making a mark with a paintbrush. She also has some text that she's used um, a, 
she um, takes a photograph or a printer and prints on the fabric to create her text to also offer us that connection to what it's like for us to write on paper and imagine that the water is writing and making their mark on the, on the rocks as well. Next up is one of my favorites in the show. It's in the center here and it's called Beneath the Surface. So let's think about what is beneath the surface of water. Beneath the surface of water, fish perhaps. And she has made a quilted sculpture. So it's not like a quilt that you see on a wall, but she still used quilting techniques to make the fish. So you can see lots of different fishies. She has three different colors of fish, so maybe three different types of fish. And she's used stitching, as we can see. Let's take a look at how she's used that stitching to create what looks like the different, um, um, oh, I'm losing that word. Uh, I'm almost saying petals, but not quite. <laughs> the, um, the scales, the fish scales. Um, so it looks like little fish scales on, on the fish she's created by stitching into them. So she's also used washers and steel washers, like we see here, these little circles are a type of tool that are used. They're made out of metal and she's used them to create what looks like little bubbles. And they're hanging from a clear string called monofilament so that they look like they're floating. They look like they're swimming underneath the water. And they're hanging from a fence at the top. So she's getting very creative in the materials that she's using. Here's another image of that as well. So I have another term for those who are um, going to be doing the tenant up activity um, and those who just want to know as we look through the other quilts on display. Um, I'm going to talk about a memorial quilt and memorial quilts are much like story quilts and that um, they tell a story of a person. So sometimes when someone wants to remember someone, they'll make a memorial quilt. So maybe um, an ancestor who's passed away or um, somebody who um, uh, who has you don't you haven't met but an ancestor you learned about maybe on ancestry.com some people will make quilts that honor them um, by creating different designs in their quilts that maybe feature things that were um, favorite things or favorite inspirations of the, the person they're making the quilt about. And a lot of times people will also make um, family quilts where each different patch on the quilt represents a member of the family and something that they like. Um, and here in Make Us One by Shoshana Spiegel, we see um, another example of applique, so sewing pieces of fabric on top of another. Um, and we see lots of different pieces of fabric coming together on a quilt. So in a family quilt, um, it's very um, much like a family in that you have lots of different people coming together to make a family. And on a quilt, you have lots of different pieces of fabric coming together to make the design of the quilt. Um, and here the title, Make Us One, is very much like what a quilt is, making all of the different pieces one. And we have a few other examples of quilts here, but I also wanted to get a chance to talk about this one coming up, which is Disintegrating Leaves, Constructions 10 by Melinda Lowey. And she's very inspired by disintegrating leaves, leaves that crumple and fall apart. If you've ever seen in the fall, leaves that fall, they shrivel up, they get really dry, and they just become a dust after some time. They totally, completely fall apart. And you might think, what a strange thing to be inspired by. But Melinda sees beauty in them, even if they're not the beautiful colors on the trees in the fall or green in the summer, she sees beauty even in the pieces, uh, even in the leaves that fall and start to disintegrate. And if you think about it, it's a little bit like lace. So lace is a fabric that has lots of holes in it and that's just like the leaves that you see here. So she's created with her stitching something a little bit like lace, some leaves that are see-through. And she's also created, uh, she's stitched her leaves into the piece 
but she's also cut out holes in between the quilts. So in between the different pieces of fabric, she has holes just like there are holes in the leaves. So this is another example of lace. So I was just talking about how lace um, has holes in it. It's a fabric that has holes in it. And so that's what lace looks like. So we have some more examples here, but I really wanna talk about Who's Sorry Now by Diane Miller Woolman. So that's the piece on the left here with the bright colors. And when I say who's sorry now, you may think of the word sorry, like I'm so sorry, I apologize, but she has spelled it in her title like a sari, which is a type of dress that is widely used in India and other parts of the world. And saris are very vibrantly colored um, fabrics that are used to drape and dress oneself. Um, it's a little bit like a dress. You may be familiar with it. Some, usually there's a skirt and then a top piece that flows down on top of you and it's very brightly colored. So she's taken inspiration from the bright colors of the sari and woven them together here. And she has also incorporated mirrors. So she's actually stitched over the border of the mirrors and incorporated those in her work to reflect some light. You see some stitched flowers, some stitched designs throughout the work. And because this is an art quilt and not a traditional quilt that uses a pattern, she's free to break and bend some rules. So here she's actually left some, some pieces of the sari not sewn in, they just float on top of the quilt. They hang from the quilt in her own design. So if you think about how a sari might flow and hang over your shoulder, she's taking inspiration from that to use in her artwork here. So I'll run through the, there's a couple other pieces here, some examples of drawing and some examples of some bright colors and piecing um, or sewing together different pieces in the quilts here. But I would love to take any questions if you have them. So if you have a question, you can unmute yourself or raise your hand. Um, so we'll stop here. Um, if you have any questions, we'll give it a second. Now, um, if you have the activity um, already printed out or if you follow the video and, and have the parent, your parent made it from home, um, I'm gonna be on here for the next 30 minutes or so. Um, so um, if you have any questions on how to, to do that activity, I'm here to help, so I'll be here. Um, but if you, um, if you need to go, then that's, that's fine too. I really loved having you all here. Um, thank you so much for participating. It's um, very much a, a close second to having you all in person. So um, keep an eye out. We're gonna be doing more of these. We're gonna be start doing tours. We're gonna start doing tours Fridays for kids at 10.30 a.m. Um, for the, the foreseeable future until we're back in person um, and next week we're going to be joined by artist Mandy Moreland so um, and exploring dance and uh, and drawing together so um, please join us then um, we'll have more details on our website um, I've also linked our website at the top um, of the chat so under activity directions so be sure to check it out but thanks everyone so much and like I said I'll, I'll stay here to answer questions thank you